Hi, my name is Raquel Baldelamar, reporting on executive health, corporate wellness, and the creative process. And today I'm interviewing Dr. Howard Murad, a board certified dermatologist and an associate clinical professor at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. In 1989, he founded the skincare line Murad Inc. in order to share his groundbreaking skincare formulas, which were among the first to achieve measurable anti-aging results without surgery. Dr. Murad advocates an inclusive health approach to help the body create stronger, healthier cells as the pathway to health, wellness, and beauty. Today, I am speaking with Dr. Murat about corporate wellness and how executives can overcome stress and establish healthier and more productive lifestyles. Welcome, Dr. Murad. Thanks for having me. Dr. Murad, I want to talk a little bit about cultural stress and how you define cultural stress. Well, the stress of modern living is cultural stress. The rules and regulations, the digital dependency, the expectations at home and away are all part of it. I believe that it started way back in 1943, the concept of trying to communicate better when we had the first fax machine. But over time, really, I began to notice in my patients way back around the two, early 2000s, where they would come to me feeling kind of depressed, downtrodden, unhappy, and I would ask them, what's going on? Why are you that way? Well, there's traffic, there's this, I have more work. And, they couldn't quite describe it. And I began to call that cultural stress. Actually, I coined that term in 2003. And over time, what's happened is it's gotten more and more difficult. I believe that around 10 years ago, when the iPhone came out, that was a, 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 a moment that really made a difference in people's lives. It started out as just being a phone. And all of a sudden, now we, can't, we live with it. It's our best friend. We sleep with it. It's in our pocket. It's always with us. We're constantly on it. And at the same time, things have happened where there's online shopping. The robots are beginning to take over. There are all kinds of things that are beginning to happen. And they happen in a millisecond. The other thing is the sharing economy has gotten us not to feel connected in any way. So we've, we've lost our identity. So we have a kind of dealing where we're dealing with um, things like uh, obesity, I, I think is important. We have a sedentary lifestyle more and more. We don't go out anymore. We don't do exercise. We have depression. We have loneliness. We have the feeling of less worth. All of those are associated with what's going on. And I think it leads in some way even to violence that we're seeing and bullying things. People are angry. They're upset. They don't know why. It's not, life is not happy. And how do you think this is affecting people's workplace, their productivity at work, how they're creating and what they're, how they're engaging with in the workplace? Well, they're more and more trying to be more perfectionistic to answer exactly all of those, e those emails that are coming at them. And what's happening is they feel less worthy and they're limited. I think their potential is limited to create new things, new, new ideas, I think that that has limited them. Can you share three tips of what business leaders can do to combat cultural stress at work? Well, you know, cultural stress is something we can't do anything about. It's going to be here. There's going to, always going to be more traffic, more pollution, more stress. All of that is going to happen, and it's only going to get worse. It's how we deal with it. And we have to teach people how to deal with it. With me, is to encourage them to have the attributes of what they had when they were a toddler. So what does that mean? The toddler didn't have to be perfect. They, they fell a thousand times. They weren't afraid to fail. They were very creative. You give them coloring paper, they would color all over the place. We color inside the lines. We're kind of limited. So the more we behave like toddlers, I have some favorite insights, I call them. In, some people call them affirmations. One of them is dance even when you can't hear the music. We did that when we were toddlers. and We begin to do less and less of that. The healing power of touch. I recommend people getting a massage, facial, even at work. Have somebody come in and do that. We don't get touched. People are afraid to touch. You know, I'm, OK, but Mike, what, what, what am I going to do? And that's so healing. When I give my classes, I tell everybody I have 30, 40 people. And I say, you know what? I talk about everything. And I say, ask your neighbor if it's OK to hug. And they all hug each other. And all of a sudden, they're all laughing, giggling, happy. Before that, they're looking at me like this. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it makes such a difference. So doing things that encourage that toddler in you, 
the attributes that you had when you were younger, yes. I think is the secret. And it's associated with having an increase in cellular hydration. That's incredible. I want to focus on this concept of being a toddler because uh, we just did a tour throughout your offices and you showed us your art space where uh, you and your team actually go and act like toddlers and paint and color outside the lines in this beautiful space where you can be creative and fun and you just draw and you act like a child and you're doing this in a workplace environment. Yes, every so. single new hire employee, we do an hour, we talk about cultural stress, stress of modern living, and part of the end of that is we give them coloring paper and they all color inside the line. And I say, you all failed, you all <laughs> failed. <laughs> And they say, why? And they say, oh, yeah, I realize I should color outside the line. So corporate America, we need to have <laughs> art spaces where people can go and color outside the line. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's so much fun. Everyone's giggling, happy, and encourages more creation, yes. creativity. Otherwise, they're just limited. OK, we have to do this. This is what the other brand is doing. We're going to do it. No, we want to do something totally different. Well, was, we want to really make a change. I was speaking to your CEO earlier today who was saying who had she had she is less stressed working here at Murad at uh, Murad LLC than she has been in all of her previous jobs. She's producing more. She's, She's more amazing. creative. She is more productive. And it's because of this creativity, this, inst this, this, this theory of just acting like a toddler, behaving like a toddler, being okay to fail. And this is, this is all themes of what makes successful entrepreneurs, which I want to get into. I believe in, that. In a Dr. Murad, in your experience as a dermatologist, physician, you, you've seen wellness transform over the last 30 years. How do you think the wellness movement has changed? Well, I think there's what I call modern wellness. Our society has changed. Cultural stress, the way I define it, has transformed our whole life. And we have to deal with stresses that we never had before. So we have to understand things aren't what they were 10 years ago, or even five years ago. So we have to deal with what people are suffering with right now. And I think, I look at stress as being two versions of stress. There's a traditional stress, like a broken arm, that we can deal with. You go to the doctor, you get it fixed. Cultural stress is constant, pervasive, and ever-increasing. It's never going away. It's only going to get worse. We have to understand we can't change it. We could change fixing your arm, but we can't change cultural stress. How we deal with it is so important. And again, the more we act like a toddler, the better. I have a unique concept, and the, I, the whole idea of all the work I do is based on hydration. We're born with 70% water. The average woman is only 50% water, excuse me, 50% water. And over time, when we become more dehydrated, we also are aging, we have all kinds of issues. But as a toddler, you had the most water, and you were also the most creative. You weren't afraid to fail. You weren't limited. You didn't judge yourself. You could be anything. You didn't limit yourself. You were giggling. You were happy. You were joyful. And over time, as we get older, we become more and more isolated, more and more lonely, et cetera. So the more we act like a toddler, the more hydrated ourselves will be, the happier, healthier we will have, and we'll have a more fulfilling life. For people that um, have a very stress, have a lot of cultural stress factors impacting them, they, you see that we have a lack of sleep. Uh, they, they don't have, they don't practice good eating uh, habits. They, uh, their cortisone levels mm -hmm. are very high. Yeah. What do you recommend for people who uh, really are being heavily impacted? How can they, what are the, some of key first steps they can do yeah. to ado adopt a healthier? Actually, I coined the term the cultural stress anxiety syndrome, mm -hmm. and it's associated with the stress, the loneliness, the isolation, the obesity, all of those things that you're talking about. And so it's not one thing that we can do. We're not gonna just tell them you have to eat better. They know that, they're not gonna do it. Uh, we don't tell them to do more exercise, they're not gonna do it. But it's encouraging to behave differently. And what we've done, we've done a lot of research here, some genetic research as well as some other research. We've come up with an idea of having people look at some of my insights, my cards, some things like why have a bad day when you can have a good day, dance even when you can't hear the music, forgive yourself. And then we have them look at those cards twice a day and journal. And then we do psychological testing. And the, the, the events, the facts are so different. They get so much better. 
with their stress level, and then they begin to eat better, they have more friends, they're going out. We're not telling them exactly what to do. We're trying to transform their mind on their own to make the difference. You are in a place where you can really impact their behavior, their healthy behavior. And mm -hmm. that's and, and what I see what you're doing at Murad is uh, you're, you, through these affirmations, these, these cards, people are able to really change themselves, but you're ma encouraging those changes in the workplace. Right. I believe that I can't tell you exactly what to do. You need to tell yourself what you're going to do to make your life better. So we give them permission to be successful, to be happy, mm -hmm. to say no, to say yes, mm -hmm. to ask. All of those are given permission and they are acting by doing that. When you free yourself of limitations where you, oh, I can't do this, I have to be careful about that, I can't do this. And also people telling you exactly what to do. For example, we do cooking classes here on a regular basis and it's about, hey, here's a, a of all kinds of food. You decide what you want to put in your eggs. And they say, I say, oh, well, let's put some sardines. No one wants to put sardines in it. But then they just feel, okay, I'm free. I can do what I want. I'm going to make my own omelet. I'm going to put peanuts in it. I'm going to put blueberries in it. I'm going to make it with anything that you wouldn't have even dreamed of doing. Giving you the freedom to really be yourself. And, and yourself is that toddler that was very creative. That's wonderful. I noticed in your offices that you have a track, you have some workout machines, mm -hmm. you have a lot of outdoor space, a lot of natural sunlight. Is this intentional? And what, what was the purpose behind designing your office space with, uh, you know, to encourage, promote, promote physical fitness? We absolutely thought that when we moved here, we would have our employees really be more creative and more capable of functioning at a higher level. And the fact is, it has happened. Our employees are producing more work and in a joyful space. And they're happy, they're joyful, they're laughing a lot of times. And we also have, uh, every, every week we do, um, besides the art therapy classes, uh, we have yoga classes at night, we have exercises, we have meditation, we have that throughout the day. I so we can that. come or not, it's always available. Corporate America, we need more meditation rooms. We need more yoga rooms. We need more physical fitness and uh, more art in classes. office. More art <laughs> classes. I love what you say when you tell people to eat their water. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Tell me what eat their water means. Well, everybody knows we're supposed to drink eight glasses of water right. a day. That was based on a study done in 1943. In a controlled environment, people consumed about 2.4 liters or eight glasses of water a day. So maybe that's how much water we need on a daily basis. But nobody in that study actually drank eight glasses of water a day. They consume water from water from other things. So I say eat your water. Simply put, if I ask people, what, what's your favorite fruit or vegetable? What would you say? Ooh, I would say passion fruit. OK, passion fruit. I don't know exactly, but passion fruit is at least 80% water. Right. So an ounce of passion fruit is an ounce of water. But what you're getting in that water is the water is in the structure, so it's gradually released and doesn't go right through you to go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. It has all kinds of vitamins, antioxidants. It has roughage, help eliminate fat, makes your body alkaline, resistant to cancer and bone loss. And so would you rather eat the passion fruit or would you rather drink water? I'd rather eat the passion Absolutely. fruit. <laughs> so eat my water, OK. Absolutely. Are there specific fruits or vegetables that have a lot of water that you recommend people? I yeah. tell people you should eat the, the fruit or vegetable that you like. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I could tell you cucumbers and watermelon have more. As a matter of fact, watermelon actually improves the SPF of sunscreens if it's ingested internally, besides whatever else it does. But when I tell people you have to eat this or that, it's against their grain. So I never tell people specifically. I say, what vegetable do you like? Eat more of it. Enjoy it, and you'll be healthier, you'll be happier. Dr. Murad, I've always had this philosophy that uh, goes, potential has a shelf life. But then I read that you started Murad Skincare line at 50 years old. Absolutely. So you kind of took my theory <laughs> and put it on his head. <laughs> no, potential is unlimited. We all have potential beyond our means, beyond what we even dreamed we had. When you were a toddler, 
There was no limitation to what you could do. And I think we have that in us. We have to give us permission to do it. And we have to risk failure. And we have to be able to ignore the naysayers from without, but more importantly, the ones from within. And if we do that, there's no limit to what we can do. Every one of us. Every one of us has a huge potential. We just have to unlock that potential. So when you started Murad at 50, I'm sure you've already, you know, you had, you had a lot of failure, I'm sure, up to that point. You had, uh, I'm sure, well, a lot of successes. But at 50 years old, many times it's, there's a lot of people, it's, you get bitter. You get, you know, you, you have life's challenges. How do you retain that toddler, that sense of toddler and naivete and joy at 50 to do something as grand as start this new company? Well, I, I can only speak for myself. Um, I think um, I chose good parents. Um, you chose good parents. Yes. Uh, my father, for example, he, uh, we're immigrants. We came to the United States when I was seven years old. And, and where did you come from? Iraq. Okay. And uh, we, we were, you know, we started out, my father had some funds, but he, he went broke. And we had to move from a very nice house to a very small apartment. And there were times we didn't have enough to eat. And he said, you know what? We're going to have an onion sandwich and we'll be full and that's fine. We we're going to eat. Um, he was a businessman. He failed in business in the States. He ended up being a messenger. One day on his way home from work, he was a messenger in Manhattan. This is early days when minimum wage was 75 cents. You can imagine how many years ago. So he's on the subway and he gets mugged. He has no money. They took his watch. They threw him down. He's an older man. He's in his late eight, 70s, early 80s. And so he finally gets home and he walks upstairs because our elevator never works to the fourth floor. He comes in, we look at him, my gosh, what happened to you? You're, you're bleeding, what's happened? Your glasses are broken, your teeth. He says, okay, my left leg still works, I'm okay. So having a father like that is, is what encouraged me, I think, but we all have it within us. It's up to us to unlock that. And there are ways, I certainly, people are born who are a little bit more sad than others, but all of us have a potential. We just have to be able to unlock it. And we have to unlock it and become ourselves. We can never try to be someone else because we'll only fail. Mm -hmm. Become the best you is my response. Can you talk about what art does and how art stimulates your creative process and how you use art to help stimulate your creative process? Well, I am an artist, I think, because I have art pieces, but I'm not really an artist. I've never taken, you know, I took one art class and I'm, I'm not familiar with all the different artists and things like that. But acting like a toddler really gave me some creativity. So what we do when we do our art therapy classes is we talk about the toddler, we talk about hydration, all of the things we've been talking about. And I give everyone coloring paper and of course they color inside the lines and I say, you all failed because you didn't be outside the line. Then we go outside and we get the canvases with paint and we just throw the paint wherever it is. We don't even look where the paint goes sometimes. We just throw it. And then we knock on, on the canvas and we move it around and move this. And all of a sudden some beautiful thing comes out. So, and everybody's giggling and laughing. We have the joyfulness of the toddler. You know, we don't laugh anymore. We don't giggle. Yeah. I say a belly laugh a day keeps the doctor and the psychiatrist <laughs> away. And we need that. Well, there's, you know, when we talk about anti-aging and skincare and beauty, it's so much focused on the outside and the exterior. But what I see and you is that you, it's really, it's, you're focusing very much inside. I mean, the, the, these elements about being a toddler, toddler mm -hmm. are all about, it's, it's, it's the inner world. Absolutely. It's what happens to you. Your heart, the, the heart, the soul of your, yourself mm -hmm. is the most important part. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if we can encourage that to be happy, then, you know, I say make your heart happy and your skin will glow. <laughs> a lot of workplace in workplace corporate wellness programs, wellness investment programs, they need to be tied to an ROI. A lot of times uh, the CFO is not going to uh, approve a track or approve <coughs> fitness equipment or an art space if it's not somehow tied to that company's bottom line, their return on investment. So how do you measure your ROI as a business owner um, here? What do you do to measure whether these wellness initiatives that you're doing are really 
creating better, happier employees, more productive employees, a, a, be a, better, a better company. Well, you heard from my CEO. We have happier employees, and the happier they are, the more willing they are to work harder. And we don't tell them to, but we have people coming in earlier on occasion when they have to. So we, we never actually say you need to come in here, but they're dedicated. They're more motivated. They feel like this is a home for them. Mm -hmm. They feel happy being here. So they do it on their own. It's, I think if you tell people you need to come in every morning at 7 and you can't leave until 9.30, that's not going to help you. Maybe they'll stay, but they're not going to be able to function at their highest level. When they decide, I'm going to come in at 7 because I'm dedicated, I want to get this job done, I want it done right away, that's when it works. Dr. Murad, I love this concept about being a child. That part of being a child sometimes means kind of being a bad child, misbehaving a little bit. How do you deal with uh, recommending people to embrace their inner toddler, and their inner child, while also uh, being disciplined, being a well-behaved child? Right. Well, you need a little bit of both. I mean, being a toddler means you're a little bit more creative, you're more joyful, uh, and maybe doing some things that you know, maybe you wouldn't necessarily do. But on the other hand, it is a job and we, we're also adults. We're not ever going to be toddlers again. If we can take a little bit of the toddler and join it with who we are now working hard, I think that's what we do the best. You know, certainly we're not going to have some people come in and just say, you know, I don't feel like coming in today. Well, they're not going to have their job. So yes, you do have to do what you need to do. This is your job but do it in a more joy joyful way and do it in a way that you're more creative and actually functioning better. And I think encouraging yourself because you love your job, you love being here, and you're going to make sure you do the best you can because all of these other things that you're getting. We don't want you to come in here and decide, oh, I feel like sleeping and I'm going to have a temper tantrum like I did when I was a toddler and things <laughs> like that. But, but the idea of getting the best of both. Dr. Murad, thank you so very much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This is Raquel Baldelomar reporting on executive health, corporate wellness, and the creative process. Thank you for watching.